Hello everybody, welcome back to RenderBots and my name is James and today we're going to be looking at uh, four new tools inside of Cinema 4D. Um, these tools are the Atom Array, the Metaball, the Sweep and the Loft Nerve. So what we're going to do, we're going to jump straight in and take a look at these uh, four tools and see how we can use them in our workflow inside of Cinema 4D. So let's jump straight in. So as always, let's make that full screen, and now we're inside a cinema form. Now the first thing to look at is the Atom Array. This is uh, really simple. Uh, the first thing to do is just grab any shape. So let's go here and grab a cube. So there's our cube. Nice and easy, let's use our camera, we can look around that, very simple. There's our cube. Now the Atom Array is inside of here. Give it a click, and over there we see the Atom Array. Let's give that a click. Cool. And as you see, it's um, here, up here in our browser here. So if I grab my cube now and drop it into there, it now becomes this awesome shape. Now, it might not seem too much, but actually if you look inside here, let's give it all of the areas, um, or the corners, should say, a little ball on each end. So if I click on the atom array here, you can see here they've got, we've got the word cylinder radius, so I can just um, make that huge. Okay, and then we've got the sphere radius, and we can make the balls huge as well. So I'm just clicking and dragging and making those massive. You know, as I said, it's one of those things that when you look at this, there's not really much in it, It's but it's actually a complicated shape. And if I had to build this individually, it would take me some time to do. Uh, and also you can have a bit of fun with this. If I go up to my MoGraph tool, go to my cloner, tab there, drop my atom array inside the cloner. And there you see we've got them all stacked up on top of each other. So I put the atom array inside the cloner. I click on the cloner, <clears throat> and you'll see there we've got three. I can have more than three, just keep going higher and higher. But I want to make this a little bit smaller. So if I go to my atom array here, click on my sort of um, size there, and click and drag down. And there you go, you can see I've got lots of little ones inside there. Yeah, pretty good, right? So it would take a while to create all those individually, and just by using the clone the atom array, we got this really just hit the render button there. So you've got those nice little cages. It looks pretty cool. Um, again, if you go back to the cloner here, um, we've chosen the linear mode there. If I went and chose sort of radial, there you go. So pretty good. Um, yeah, I love the atom array. It makes your stuff look really, really cool. So let's uh, choose a different shape and see what else we get from that. Um, I like this one. If I go to the cube, click on the tube, Whoa, there it is. I'm going to zoom out there very quickly. And so, like I said, down here we've got the ability to move that tube inside and out. Okay, let's take it to about there. And all we're going to do now is grab the atom array again. Click on there. Put the tube inside of there. Boosh. Look at that. It's pretty good, right? So it's pretty complicated inside what's going on inside of there. And yet it's done everything for us. Um, I just love it. I think it's really, really good. And as you can see, we can actually bring all this inner radius in and out as well, as and when I need it. So, you know, um, I think the atom array is really good because, you know, um, it looks really complicated. And actually, um, a design can just look as simple as that, just by adding those. We could bring the camera in here, and this could maybe be some sort of tunnel, you know, going through here. Um, I love it. Atom array. So there you go. There's our first tool. Pretty cool. Right, next up is the Metal Ball. Now, before we start the Metal Ball, what we've got to do is create a shape first. So I find this works incredibly well. We're going to go to the Shape menu again and hit the Sphere. And it gives us a simple sphere there. And that's, that's all I need, really. Um, and this time, I'm going to grab hold of the Meta Ball, which is inside here again. So we've been to the Atom Array. And now we're in the Meta Ball. We just give that a click. And the Meta Ball sits independently of the sphere. So again, we've got to grab hold of the sphere and drop it inside of the Meta Ball. Boosh. Now, not much has happened other than the shape sort of changing slightly. So if I render that, yeah, it's got lots of polygons in there. It's not absolutely perfectly round, but that's not a problem just yet. So let's explain what the Meta Ball is going to do. Is I need something to interact with this, okay? So I always think of like um, in Terminator, Two, I think, where the guy has some molten metal and it kind of comes together, fuses together. So what I need to do is take the sphere, grab hold of my shape menu, and go for another sphere. Okay, so the sphere is sitting outside this. So I'm going to grab the sphere, drag it down, 
and now it's sitting inside of there so if I go to my movement tool over here and grab this there you go look at this and that's the metaball right it actually starts to fuse together with the other shapes I've hit the render button now have a look yeah it's pretty good right look at that okay we'll click back, click back on in here so as it moves past it, it starts to kind of almost like a cell eating another cell. It starts to fuse itself together. And of course, this is really good because obviously we can um, keyframe this to move across and become part of that cell, actually make this move. So great for sort of people who want to do medical stuff. Uh, this is pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm down here, I've got this um, liquid material, which I just made up earlier. So if I click and grab this and drop it onto here, Hit the render button, look. There you go, so it looks like these two little globules now. The render button, there we go. So all we've got to do now is move that closer and you'll see it just starts to envelop. Hit the render button again. And now you see it becomes part of that piece. Really, really quick, good. So if we want to animate these into each other, like this, what we'll do is we'll start off with that over there. Um, we've got this sphere highlighted here and all we can do is bring um, see so we can keyframe zero here okay so all I'm gonna do is put a keyframe at that point there okay so we've got this sphere highlighted I've just hit the keyframe at zero now if I move this all the way over to here say 75 drag um, this ball to here perfect just hit the keyframe button once more okay hit rewind press play Great job, Brian. Perfect. If I pause, just hit my render menu set in here. We're going to choose a, uh, a film here. Let's go for something nice and small just to um, render this pretty quick. So 25 frames a second, that's fine. Make sure this is on all frames. Okay. Just press the render button there. And we see that's quickly rendering that out. And again, as it comes through, it'll just join up. Um, it's really uh, quite a nice one. We'll just wait for that to finish. Okay, it's finished. And as you see, if I press the play button now, you'll see that come charging towards the other one. Pretty impressive. That's the Metaball. Um, really, really nice tool. I'm sure some medical professionals out there would love to see sort of two cells coming and joining to each other or create some sort of clever uh, sci-fi stuff. It's good. Let's uh, pause that. Let's hit rewind. So one thing to be familiar with here with all this is if I click on the meta ball here, we see how many sort of polygons are making these up. And they're very, very um, small um, amount of polygons. And we can see a subdivide here. But if I keep clicking uh, down here and edit subdivision here, um, we can, um, let's make them massive. There you go. So as I start to come down, um, centimeters there you start to see how many more polygons add so you get a more refined shape inside of there we see the mesh being really really tight there again um, and again that just refines it again the more polygons as in like we're rendering uh, the more it will take longer to render because it's got more polygons inside of it again I normally find when you create a sphere that's pretty enough polygons to do a nice bit of animation so that's the meta ball um, yeah pretty good okay next up we're going to look at the sweep no, now to do the sweep uh, we need a few things so the first thing we look at is getting us a something for it to sweep through so if I click on here we're going to go for maybe a circle okay there's my circle there go to my um, size tool there and drop that down to there perfect and uh, what do we need? We need a sweep, right? So click on here, inside of... Okay, we need a sweep next. So we're going to click on here and go to the word sweep. See that inside of there? Perfect. Um, what we need to do is put the circle inside of the sweep, like that. Nothing's happened at the moment because it needs something for it to sweep through. So if I go and grab um, this here and do a sort of freehand and just draw like this across the screen, that's all I've done. Now as you see, um, that spline it's kind of sitting a little bit upright here. Now all I'm going to do is grab that spline and drop it into uh, my sweep nerb. Okay, put the circle above it. Boosh, there we go. So a bit of organization inside there. So we've got the sweep, we've got the sweep sort of size, and then we've got the spline it's running through. So I always think of this like a cable. 
Okay, so if I go to the circle and I make the radius down here smaller, you'll see what I mean. There you go. See it's entirely? So it reminds me of um, when you want to draw a cable for maybe a guitar or an amplifier. You can sort of do this random shape. And this is all about the sort of size of that cable. So if I render that out, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, so nice and simple. Okay. Um, and that's just a simple spline I've used. What's really cool here is if I get rid of that spline and I go into um, my splines here and I choose something like the helix. Okay, so here's my helix here. And there's loads of attributes down here where you can see that the helix takes on. Now if I drop that helix into here. Okay, um, just do this. There you go. So again, it's really important you get it in the right hierarchy here. So the sweep. Then our little um, one there, our spline there, then the helix spline on top of that. And so if I hit render again, you'll see that it gives us a really cool um, shape inside there. Okay. Now, remember, if I'm not using any lights, this is just rendering as is. So I've got a start angle here. And I love this because um, with the helix, there's so much you can do inside of here. You know, end radius, make it bigger or smaller, make it tighter. Um, end angle, spin that around like that. Isn't that great? Again, to do all this sort of freehand would take a while. So if I hit render, yeah, pretty good. Made a nice little sweep inside of there. So that was end angle, see that? So what I'm gonna do is bring it down to zero. Boosh, like that. So let's see it maybe about there. This can be the start of our, our animation. All I have to do, which is there. Go to my end angle, which is here. Give it a click, hold down the command key and give it one click. Okay, just give it one click, it's turned red. Move my playhead to the very end, like so. Now fire this around, like this. Perfect, look at that. Okay, and just give it, hold on the command key and give it one last click here. Boosh, there we go. So when I hit rewind now and press play, yeah, really cool animation. And again, that's using the sweep nerve to do that. Really, really nice. So just command key, changing that uh, keyframe from the very first minus seven to 1,900 looks like. Okay, and again, just rewind that if you didn't get that. Nice and simple. So that's a sweep nerve and I love it because again, just take the helix out. We can put any spline in here to make this look uh, pretty cool. Um, even this little cog wheel. So drag the cog wheel inside here. Again, look, I mean, before I even move it, there's a really interesting shape there. It could be so the, sort of a jet engine for your uh, spaceship. Uh, but grab the circle, drop it inside there. And we can see now that cog has a spline running all the way through it. Um, just pretty cool. Like I said, it's a big time saver when using the sweep nerve. Um, next up is the loft nerve. Now, um, I've used this a few occasions uh, when it's difficult to create a certain shape. So imagine a, a fuselage for an aeroplane. We had to bring maybe an aeroplane picture in here and do a big fuselage. Um, we would use the loft nerve to do this. So let's give a little demonstration what I mean by that. So if I grab hold of, um, again, uh, my spline. Okay, there's my spline like that. And what I'm gonna do is um, just Command C, Command V. That's a simple copy and paste. Just basically move that spline across to there. Okay. Now Command C, Command V again, and move it down. Okay, and then Command C and Command V, and move it down again. So we've got a few splines inside of there. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go and grab hold of my loft node. Here's the loft. Okay, now I'm going to grab each one of these and drop it inside of this. Okay, and as you can see, it's almost like it's been extruded out, it's pulling the whole thing out. Um, and what's really cool is, so you can see it's actually just like a bit like a toothpaste, it's been squirted out across each side of there. But each loft, uh, each of these um, splines, I can pick up and move up and down. Okay, so there's another one there, we can move this down or, or up. And again, we can obviously animate these as well. So let's just undo that, Command Z on a Mac to undo that. Um, so I can grab all of uh, Spline 3, and I normally double click on this and call this um, End. 
and this is the start. Just so I've got an idea where I am across each one of these. So, so again, it's pretty good because all, what I can do here is take the end one and keep extending it. Yeah, keep extending it inside out. But what's really good about all this is because, again, if I'm building a fuselage for an airplane, is I need this to taper off at the end. So this spline here is like grab hold of uh, my resize tool inside here. And just click and just drag down. Okay, see that? So that would almost be the tip. So yeah, this would almost be the tip of the aeroplane, which means when we come to the front, the start, should I say, we can actually, um, again, start to bring this um, section down. Almost like, um, I mean, it's going to even be a bullet or something like that. Yeah, so we get this really cool shape that we can change the the size of that. Pretty good. So this can be any shape inside of here. So again, let's just grab hold of these. Let's delete that. So a loft can actually obviously be a mixture of splines. It could be um, square, moving into a circle, moving into a star. So let's drag the rectangle in first, followed by the circle, followed by the star. Now, again, they're just all dropped in the same place, which is why we've got this strange little kind of looking thing here. So all I've got to do is grab hold of the star, go to my movement tool and just drag that backwards. Yeah, pretty cool, right? So there's our star there. And then we grab hold of our uh, circle, drag that back. Okay, and then there's our rectangle. So we've managed to create what is uh, um, a square, merging into a circle, merging into a star shape. And again, this is brilliant for creating um, some really great abstract shapes inside of cinema. Really, really cool. And again, if I go to that circle, I can move it wherever I want inside of there. And again, go to the movement large tool there and just drag that down to nothing. There we go. Um, <laughs> looks a bit like a comet, right? Uh, so there, we've got that one there. And we just drag that again down to something that's quite like that. Um, just brilliant. Really, really clever. And that's kind of just one other things you can do with Lofnub. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, it was been a while since I've been on YouTube. I do appreciate all of your comments. I do appreciate all your subscriptions as well. Thank you so much. Um, as always, you can follow me on Twitter at... Um, <laughs> it's, been, it's been a while, hasn't it? That's at render underscore bots and it's down there or email me at james at renderbots.co.uk until next time happy rendering guys take care bye, -bye.